Sucker Punch movie thoughts. Why was the girl who got away the most unlikable character of the, what, five, I think? And why didn't we really find out, you know, what did happen between the sisters, you know, that whole thing? In general, it seems like there was a lot of, you know, backstory and development that didn't really that just wasn't there in the final film. Uh, I liked the bit with the dragon, but the death of it seemed a bit, I don't know, underdone, perhaps. The whole thing with, you know, it's not original, but the flying under that bridge, it was cool enough, but then it doesn't at least I don't remember it as anything falling onto the dragon. It seemed to just be slowed down, or maybe trapped there, and then it spews fire at them. It just seems like it would have been cooler if it had, you know, gotten not completely out with, you know, big rocks from the bridge, something like that. The cinematography is extremely awkward when trying to avoid Browning's face near the end, and I'm sorry, but I did not find it to be that stunning of a sight to see her eyes post, you know, lobotomy. It just wasn't that. I don't know if it was an acting thing or if they just built it up too much. It just wasn't that strong, and we have all these awkward shots. They even show him grabbing her neck without showing her face. It's just way too obvious. It was, yeah, really stuck out. The Nazi zombies were pretty cool. And the thing about them bleeding steam, you know, it's obviously a way to get a, you know, get away with stuff, you know, the whole PG-13 rating thing. But it did kind of work out, you know, kind of like the sand bleeding in Hellboy. You know, sometimes it just works out still. But other than that, a lot of the time you could really tell they wanted to do an R. It was just, you know, to open it to a wider audience. To break in the dough. I don't know. Overall, I think there were too many tiny little cool ideas that just don't particularly go anywhere and aren't... Nothing interesting is really done with many of them. It's not difficult to make zombie Nazis, orcs, dragons, samurai demons with glowing red eyes, and robots automatic trains with bombs on them. It's not difficult to make that stuff cool. And it's not difficult to make something cool that only lasts for, let's say, five to ten minutes. I'm not sure any of the action scenes lasted more than ten minutes, and I'm not saying they should have. I think it would have been cool if they had written a movie where the action scenes did really connect to one another, and where it was one overall world. I imagine something with like a time portal that they have to, you know, they have to do something in this particular time period or universe or whatever, and then they have to hurry up and get to this teleportation device that's going to, you know, self-destruct in a certain amount of time and get to the next one, and they never know where they're gonna wind up or, you know, something, I don't know. So, the basic, you know, the, the symbolism and all that, I've heard some suggest that, you know, Baby Doll did not exist at all, that it was an alternate personality of the one that got away, I don't even remember her name. I disagree, because it's clearly stated about Baby Doll that 
she helped another patient escape, you know. I guess that's supposed to be sort of like her winning. She doesn't get out herself, but she is defiant, you know, and he doesn't rape her there at the end. You know, it's the... He misses that she resists, you know. It's no longer... There is nothing left to take from her, I guess, because she had the lobotomy. And, you know, he gets caught by the cops. Maybe the place gets, you know, either, I don't know, shut down or at least renovated. You know, they get people there who do a better job. Just a quick interjection. I never really felt like the cat house was that much of a trapped environment. You know, it has this sort of prison escape movie feel, supposedly, but, you know, and there are far better prison escape movies out there. And suddenly they mention, like, guards and stuff. I saw guards at the mental institution. I was, I felt like the mental institution was a prison, but I didn't really feel that about the cat house. I didn't, I don't know. I don't think they did that good of a job of establishing that as being, you know, somewhere they were trapped. Now, the five things. I don't remember what the fifth one, you know, the mystery one was supposed to be. Was it just yourself, you know, you, or spirit, or something? Other than that, I could maybe see the other four as, you know, symbolizing something, you know, a map. You know, you figure out for yourself where you're going, how you end up, where you wanna, when you want to go. Fire, you know, passion, obviously. A key, you know, you hold the key within you. You know, it's inside you to be able to do these things that you really want to do or that you have to do. You might have to search deep within you, but it's there. Have no idea what the knife is supposed to be, though. And then again, you know, what is the fifth thing, then? Yeah. I think that's about what there is what I have to say in this video, so feel free to comment down below if there's anything else you want my opinion on.